evening. Welcome to Grace Lutheran, and I'm Pastor Bonnie Grimaldi, and I'm very, very glad to see you this evening. Lent with the Desert Fathers, a series on fasting and simplicity, is our midweek Lenten theme this year. Each Wednesday in Lent, starting, uh, starting last week, um, I'll be speaking about a particular aspect of the practices of fasting and simplicity as seen through the lens of the desert tradition. And tonight we will hear from a desert father named Abba Zosimos. Let us pray for Dave Grimaldi, my husband, who is at Union Hospital waiting to be transferred to the Cleveland Cl Clinic main campus. And let us pray for Shirley Johnson, who is in palliative care at Park Village. And we continue to pray for Ukraine that justice and peace will come swiftly. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. We gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of heaven and earth, you come to us and make us yours. Equip us by your Spirit to confess our sin, embrace your forgiveness, and see the way you set before us in your Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. With honest of heart, let us confess our sin. Merciful God, loving Father, forgive us. Our will is bound up in sin, and we cannot break free. We have spoken when we should have been quiet. We were silent when we should have spoken out. We acted when we knew better. We were still when we should have moved. For the wrong we have done, for the good we have failed to do, have mercy on us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. People of God, look to Jesus, the beloved Son of God, sent to save you and sent you, set you free from sin and death because God loved the world so very much. Take hold of God's grace and God's promise of eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, precious Lord, walk close beside us throughout this season and always lead us along the paths of righteousness. Guide us in the ways of truth. Direct us according to your good and gracious will until at last we reach the place you have prepared for us above. In your saving name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The gospel, the uh, reading from the Old Testament is Isaiah 55, 1 through 9. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and that you have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did, or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord.
Please pray with me. Open my eyes, O Lord, to see that all that I have and all that I am is a gift received from you. Free me from the power of my possessions. Strengthen me to let go of my attachments. Let nothing in my life become a substitute for love of you and my neighbor. Amen. Abba Zosibos, a desert father, said, in time through neglect, we lose even the little fervor that we suppose we have in our ascetic renunciation. We become attached to useless, insignificant, and entirely worthless matters, substituting these for the love of God and neighbor, appropriating material things as if they were our own or as if we had not received them from God. What do you have that you did not receive? And if you received it, then why did you boast as if it were not a gift? He also said, for as I always like to say, it is not possessing something that is harmful, but being attached to it. In these two sayings, Abba Zosimos is pointing us to the power of detachment, a key element in the practice of simplicity. Detachment does not mean rejection of things or people. Instead, it reorients our relationship to those things and people. In identifying and letting go of useless, insignificant, and entirely worthless matters, we learn what is worth holding on to. Attachment is like a closed fist that clings as tightly as possible, whereas detachment is like an open hand that receives and holds lightly. Detachment allows for authentic, healthy, and holy relationships. For Abba Zosimos, detachment frees us to keep the two great commandments, love of God and love of neighbor. For Abba Zosimos, the issue is not the possession, the thing itself, but our relationship to the thing. Make an inventory of the 25 things that mean the most to you. What is your relationship to them? What do they mean to you? And why do they mean that? What do they give you or do for you? If someone asks you for one of those things, could you freely give it away? Take one of those things and give it away. There is much about our economy that needs and encourages us to be consumers and buyers, appropriating material things, in the words of Abba Zosimos. True and lasting detachment will necessarily mean changing this attitude or expectation within ourselves. Reflect on what or how much you really need over the next week, month, maybe even the remainder of Lent. Buy the absolute necessities, but refuse to buy anything new. The kind of things we buy because we like them, we want them, and we have either the money or the credit Reflect on this experience. Find a way to use the time and money that would have been spent shopping to express your love of God and neighbor. We become attached to useless, insignificant, and entirely worthless matters, says Abba Zosimos. Clutter might be another way to think about what he is saying. Although attachments of our lives become cluttered and there is less room for what truly matters. Love of God and neighbor is your life cluttered. In what ways? By what? Though Abba Zosimos is speaking of material attachments, we can also become attached to and our lives cluttered by non-material matters such as fear, busyness for busyness sake, headline news, technology, how might you use this Lent to declutter? The Bible deals clearly and forcefully with 
oppressive slavery to things. The economic of life is the number one topic in the Bible. It expresses it in the fight against idolatry and the call to social justice, the two biggest topics in the Old Testament. The psalmist says, if riches increase, set not your heart on them. The Tenth Commandment is against covetousness, the inner lust to have, which leads to stealing and oppression. The writer of Proverbs understood that he who trusts in the riches, in his riches, will wither. Jesus literally declared war on the materialism of his day. The Aramaic term for wealth is mammon, and Jesus condemns it as a rival god. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Jesus spoke a lot about economic issues. He says, blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God, and woe to you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Many of his parables had to do with wealth and the proper detachment from material things. He knew that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, which is precisely why he commanded his followers, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. He is not saying that the heart should or should not be where the treasure is. He's stating the plain fact that wherever you find the treasure, you will find the heart. He exhorted the rich young ruler not just to have an inner attitude of detachment from his possessions, but literally to get rid of his possessions if he wanted the kingdom of God. He says, take heed and beware of all covetousness, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. He counseled people who came seeking God, sell your possessions and give alms. Provide yourselves with purses that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail. He told the parable of the rich farmer whose life centered in hoarding. We might call him prudent. Jesus called him a fool. He states that if we really want the kingdom of God, we must, as a merchant in search of fine pearls, be willing to sell everything we have to get it. Jesus is not calling for a legalistic asceticism. He's calling for placing material goods in their proper place and keeping them there. Asceticism and simplicity are actually mutually incompatible. Asceticism renounces possessions. Simplicity places possessions in proper perspective. The main goal of the spiritual discipline of simplicity is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that everything else that is necessary for life will fall into its proper place. Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. And the apostle Paul said, do not be anxious about anything. In both cases, the point is that when you go to God first, everything you are worried about will be taken care of. Simplicity and freedom from anxiety are characterized by three inner attitudes. What we have is a gift from God. What we have is to be cared for by God. What we have is to be shared with others. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Let us profess our faith by the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, Eternal Father, we praise you for your enduring mercy and abundant grace. We thank you for your steadfast love. Help us to be merciful as you are merciful and to love as you first loved us. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, who leads you in the pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. <laughs>